Good. So I have the pleasure today of reciting Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 247. <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most gracious. Al-lazina yunfiquna amwalahum bil-layli wal-nahari sirraw wa alaniyatan falahum adruhum inda rabbihim wa la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun Those who spend their wealth by night and by day, by stealth and openly. Those shall never fear be, be fear upon, neither shall they grieve. Sadaqallahu Alazim. Alright, so you'd like to come back to stage? Thank you, boys. Of course. All right. So thank you so much for coming today. I just want to say a few words about how I got interested in this hospital. So um, in today's world, cancer has had major families around the world. Too many of us personally know someone affected by cancer. Whether we witness the fight of a loved one directly, or we see the worry of their family and friends. I remember when my brother got cancer, he was only 46 years old, and he was diagnosed by mesothelioma, which is basically a cancer that you get by exposure to asbestos. I don't know where he was exposed to it, but he fought valiantly. He had three small kids aged five, three, and one. And, but he passed away a year later, and mashallah, now his boys are grown, and we are all so proud of them. And then, I lost another friend of mine. She was the life of a party. She, wherever she used to be, like, you would be laughing. She was so witty. She also fought really furiously. She was so mad. She said, why is this illness going, to, I'm going to fight this illness. But, you know, she also uh, lost the battle a few years later. So, however, there are a good many uh, of my friends who are survivors, and I'm so proud of them. Let's have a round of applause for all cancer survivors. <laughs> this is why Cancer Care Hospital is so close to my heart. Please open up your hearts and donate to this wonderful and noble cause. Imagine how many people can get better due to your donation and generosity. Imagine how many wives will not lose their husbands and vice versa. How many children will not lose their parents. Imagine seeing your child get better with timely intervention. Also imagine your loved one being looked after in one of the first palliative care hospitals in Pakistan. I want to thank all of you for coming and joining us today. I want to end by quoting Thomas Edison. When you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this, you haven't. And I want to leave you with this thought. Cancer is a word, not a sentence. And today, I did my bit in helping someone. I want to thank Zahid Hamid Sahab also, who's been my so support and he's been in the background, but he's like standing besides me and he has been helping us with this whole function. And I also want to thank Ms. Ibrahim Sahab, who is uh, lent us support by providing us with all the music and entertainment. And uh, now I would like to introduce Ms. Uh, Brigadier Zahirullah Sahab. He is the project director of Cancer Care Hospital. He has stood personally and witnessed each brick being put on those buildings of Cancer Care Hospital. He has been there since inception, and we are very, very grateful to him. Brigadier Sahab, please come and say a few words.
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ایٹ دی آؤٹ سیٹ آئی وڈ لائک ٹو تھینک ایوری ون ہو ہیز ٹیکن یور ٹائم آؤٹ فار بینگ ہیئر وتھ اس فار دس فنڈ ریزنگ ڈیلر اینڈ آل دس ہیپن بیکاز آف دی ہارڈ ورک آف ٹو پرسنس آر امبیسڈرس ان شکاگو سمینہ امتیازی اینڈ مسٹر سعید حمید کلوز فار دیم Cancer Care Hospital is a dedicated cancer hospital which provides free of cost cancer treatment to all. And also, it does not refuse cancer treatment to any individual without any discrimination as far as the stage of cancer is concerned. I think this is the only hospital in Pakistan which is providing this facility. And you can well imagine that in this hospital, there is no cash counter. So there is no transaction as far as money is concerned. This hospital was conceived in January 2014. And we determined two things. First was the mission statement, which I said earlier. That was free treatment of cancer for all. And secondly, Nobody will be refused treatment irrespective of the stage of cancer. After determining the mission statement of this hospital, we ventured out to look for the land. And we located 27 acres of land near Riven, where we started construction. Before we started construction, we got hold of the best consultant, architect, Mr. Sarfrasa of Progressive, a very expensive uh, architect, but is very kind to us, who designed a hospital free of cost. This hospital has been designed to be a 600 bedded dedicated hospital. And inshallah, when this hospital is complete, it will be the largest hospital of cancer in Pakistan. Now, Mr. Sarfra Saab told us that since this is a charity hospital, you can't start construction of the complete hospital of 600 bedrooms. So what you do is, you start construction of different blocks, which were eight in number, and each block was of about 100 bedrooms each. Some were administrative blocks, there were two of them. The remaining were housing the beds for the patients. <coughs> Initially also be designed that each block will be a self-accounting unit, <coughs> decentralizing everything to the doctors over there to run their respective departments. We did not want to have a centralized control to give them liberty or flexibility. When we started building the hospital, we realized one thing. And then thing was that Breast cancer was a big, in fact a menace, or you can call it, or you can call it a big uh, a, a disease which was overtaking the ladies. So we decided that let's take on this breast cancer screening first. Let's locate and detect and screen the ladies and detect cancer at an early stage so that they can be treated easily with less cost. Now for this, we had to import three state-of-art mammography machines from Italy. They were digital machines. One was mounted, sorry, two were mounted on the vehicles to provide mammography at the doorstep of the people, of the women. And one mammography machine was installed at the hospital. Now these two mobile vehicles They go throughout the length and breadth of the country, carry out screening of the women, and anybody detected with cancer is provided free cancer treatment at the hospital. So far, we have done over 42,000 mammographies. They are in Balochistan, we have done. We have done it in Deer Singh. We have done it in KPK. We have done it in Gilgit, Baltistan. 
We have done it in Hunza. We have done it in Skardu. We have done it in Azad Kashmir. And the latest we did was in Hunza. Sorry, in Chitra. In Chitra, we spent one month over there. Carried out 523 mammographies, out of which seven cancers were detected, and we are trying to treat them. Second thing what we found was that the hospitals are refusing treatment to the last stage cancers. Anybody with the last stage of cancer who goes to the hospital, the doctors tell them, take them home. You can well imagine, if you have fever, you are admitted in the hospital. And when the fever increases, you go to the ICU. So as the disease increases, the standard of taking care also increases. But in cancer, it is so pathetic that the moment you require more treatment, where you require more care, the doctors tell you, take the patient home. So this is what we learned, and we decided that in our hospital, we will start our hospital with 120 palliative care hospital. We were very lucky that we got Dr. Riyazul Rahman, he will come later on, who was a palliative care consultant, trained in Australia, ran about 10 palliative care units in Malaysia. He was there to head this department. So these 120 bedded hospital will be the largest palliative care unit in Asia. Normally the palliative care units, they vary from 20 beds to 30 beds. Not more than that, because the care is very difficult. We do not have the doctors with compassion, nor do we have the nurses to look after them. So this hospital, which we are talking about, which is not going to refuse treatment to anybody, will be the largest palliative care hospital in Pakistan, also in Asia. As we were constructing the building, when we finished the grey structure, something came up. And we realized that radiation, which forms 80% of the treatment of cancer, we do not have machines in Pakistan to give radiation to the patients. The number of machines are less, the patients are more, the waiting time is increasing. So the waiting time, let's say for Chakrat Hanam then, was six to eight months. For other hospital, it varies from 12 months to 18 months. You can well imagine if somebody is detected with cancer and you tell him, you wait for one and a half year to get radiation, will he survive? No. So what we did on emergency basis, we started our block, which was called the radiation block. This block is the largest in the country in Pakistan. It has got seven radiation bunkers with seven state-of-art radiation machines which have been upgraded. You can carry out IMRT with it, you can carry out robotic surgery with it. All these facilities are available on these machines. And to support these machines, we acquired three simulators. Two are 2D digital simulators and one is a 3D digital simulator. Then we realized was that for the ladies, there is no brachy machine. So for brachy therapy, we imported a machine from uh, Sweden. And this machine, made by Lacta, has got the latest applicators like Geneva and Venisa. So as far as we are concerned, we have tried our level, our level best to give the best, the most expensive, and the most state-of-art equipment for cancer, cancer treatment to the patients. The man, as I said earlier, is a palliative consultant, very dedicated officer. In his entire life as a doctor, he has never done private practice. You don't find such doctors in Pakistan. I don't know about, I don't know about America. So this doctor, who is a role model for all of us, will be running our palliative care unit. Over to Dr. Yas. Assalamualaikum ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming and attending this fundraising event. 
थैंक यू डॉक्टर समीना इम्तियाजी जाहिद हमीद साहब इब्राहिम साहब एंड ऑल अदर्स एंड स्पेशल थैंक्स टू रोजीमान एंड वे फ्लाइंग ऑल द वे टू शिकागो आई बिलीव इट इज़ आर फर्म बिलीफ फॉर मी ऑल्सो एंड फॉर आर होल टीम दैट वट एवर वी आर डूइंग वी आर जस्ट अ स्मॉल वर्कर इट्स एक्चुअली अल्लाह सुबहान ताली द क्रिएटर हु इज़ बिल्डिंग दिस हॉस्पिटल इट इज़ बियॉन्ड आर कंट्रोल and uh, whatever so far has been achieved is because of allah subhanahu wa taala and it is our firm belief whosoever comes to the hospital walks every step he takes is sadqa jariya ladies and gentlemen coming here today every step you have taken is sadqa jariya believe me it is my faith okay thank you so much so without uh, much ado i will start the presentation and first show you two clips and after that i'll give you a visual presentation on the powerpoint I start this पाकिस्तान भर में फ्री मेमोग्राफी टेस्ट की सहूलत मुहैया की जा रही है अब तक बयालीस हजार से ज्यादा खातन की फ्री मेमोग्राफी की जा चुकी है हजाज अस्पताल लाहौर में भी नस्ब की गई है जहां 20 से 25 खातन रोजाना फ्री मेमोग्राफी करवाती हैं हमारी मोबाइल गाड़ियां ऐसे दुई हैं जहाँ की खातन के लिए शहरों में पहुँचना नामुमकिन होता है जैसे कि सिंध में ढोडर बलोचिस्तान में हाल ही में चित्राल में भी कैंसर के अस्पताल की जानब से निगत अकबशा और रोजीमान के ताउन से मेमोग्राफी की पुरजोर मुहिम चलाई हमारी बोर्ड मेंबर मोहतरमा हरीशा जमान साहबा और बरगेर जहीरुल्ला साहब की निगरानी और चित्राल स्काउट की मदद से मुमकिन हुआ तो तेईस फ्री मेमोग्राफी की गई याद रहे चालीस साल से जायद उम्र की खातन के लिए हर साल मेमोग्राफी करवाना इंतहा जरूरी है sponsored the chitral camp and beyond uh, so thank you so much 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Alhamdulillah. After a lapse of about 25 years, a new cancer hospital has come into being, into existence. Allah, Jazadehdi Imran Khan sahab ko 25 saal pehle, he built a, for the first cancer hospital. It started with 20 beds and one radiation machine. And over the period of years, it is now 180 beds and about five radiation machines. But in, the, in these 25 years, uh, not even one more cancer hospital has been added by the government. So it has not been the focus of the healthcare authorities or the system in the government there to take care of poor cancer patients. So Alhamdulillah, we are after a lapse of about 25 years started this uh, uh, cancer hospital, which is Cancer Care Hospital and Research Center. The vision was of Professor Sharyar, so we are a group or a bunch of uh, oncologists as well as other board members also. There are a business community and there are certain other people who have also joined us. And so we started this project some in like 2014, as Brigadier Saab said. So you see, at the time when the first cancer hospital, that is Shaukat Khanam, 25 years ago, the population of Pakistan was about 10 crores. And uh, now, today, it stands at uh, 21 crores, 21 crore ki abadi hai. Or if you see the facility which is available for cancer patients, and the statistics shows that about 3,53,000 new cases are added every year. And unfortunately, only about 25 to 30 percent of the patients are treated. They are the curative patients. Unfortunately, majority, I would say 80 percent, they die without getting adequate care, adequate care, you know. So you can see the Punjab is the largest province. At that time, it has had a population of about four crores. And today, the population of Punjab is 11 crores. And if you see, this is the, uh, if you join a few of these uh, uh, European countries, uh, Germany, Italy, and so on, even if the population is less than 11 crores. So this is a whole country, you can say, Punjab is a whole country. There are a very few cancer centers. Peshawar, there are about three, four, five uh, centers. In Punjab, there are about 11 centers for a population of 11 crores. So, SIN is much better because there are about seven centers for the number of uh, patients which are uh, diagnosed is 81,000 and then there is only one center in Quetta. So, there was an unmet need, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that out of the, in Punjab, if we, which is the largest province, if we are diagnosing 187,000 patients Annually, that is 21% of them get the treatment. So we are just treating about 40,000 patients, and rest of, rest of the patients they do not get the adequate treatment. So this is the statistic which shows that currently, you know, about 10,500 is treated in Shaukat Khanam, and all the atomic energy centers which are uh, in Punjab, in Mol, Binar, Minar. So about 12,000 of these are treated there, and in the 46 teaching hospitals in Punjab, only four have cancer care facilities or cancer treatment facilities. So a total of about 40,000 patients are treated and the others go untreated. So there is, this was the unmet need. So what we decided was to, the division of, under the vision of Professor Sherryar to start a hospital where nobody will be refused treatment irrespective of the stage of the disease. And also as Brigadier Saab said, that the mission statement was that free treatment for all deserving patients. So those who can pay or can afford usually make a donation. So the first sufferers were the females and that was also to breast cancer patient females. So it can be called a tragedy because there is a lot of program going on about you know awareness of breast cancer, early detection of breast cancer. But what if you detect the cancer and then you can't treat? There are, there are limitation of resources, there are limitation of centers. So you diagnose, you spread awareness and the pa patient comes and doesn't find any treatment. That is a tragedy, it's a big tragedy. So what we did was, we bought three mammography machines and uh, as Brigadier Saab said, uh, we mounted two of them on the uh, vehicles and sent them all over Pakistan. And one machine was fixed in the hospital so every day about 13, 30 patients are coming and getting the screening done. 
So in the three years, we have done 42,000 mammographies and detected, detected about uh, more than 1,200 patients uh, who were then subsequently treated in cancer care hospital. Okay, so, uh, so I can, I'll show you some of these slides which be the type of patients we see usually in the OPD in Pakistan and uh, viewers, you know, if you uh, <laughs> so unfortunately, this is the state of affairs. We even take out worms from there in uh, the, the wound, their fungating masses. And believe me, every patient carries a story. It seems that they knew that they have a small uh, you know, lump in their breast, but unfortunately never sought any treatment. There were social innovations and so many other factors also. So, uh, patient this one. So when we asked her, so she said, I knew very early that I had this uh, lump in my breast, but I didn't have the resources. My husband died and I had one son. So whatever money he left behind, and uh, I thought whether I get treatment for myself or educate my son. So she decided to educate the son. So we asked her, hey, achha, BBA so we started scratching our heads, ke, ji, BBA karke bhi pata ni, milti hai, yani milti. To apni de di na. Apni de di apni ke liye. Very unfortunate. So we see in clusters, if you see in the patients uh, in the OBD, you know, if you see a hundred patients, 25 of them would be breast cancer. And if you see 100 females, about 44 or more than 44 are breast cancer. So it's a very common disease and it's uh, on the rise also. The only solution is early detection. So that was the unmet need. So this is why we started screening. And uh, uh, early detection, as in your country, I say in your country, you are Americans, American. Even in UK, it is by law binding on the females, every female above the age of 40 is supposed to have a screening mammography done. Less than a grain of uh, rice, it's a short tumor, even half the size of the grain of the rice. So then, there's no need to chop off the breast and no need to give you know, such an uh, intense chemo. And the treatment will come out and the will come so, uh, I'm sure if somebody misses the date for the appointment for the screening, so they usually get an SMS and then they call you and again, still you don't come. I, you came to me, but then the police goes to fetch them. <laughs> advanced diseases. So, we have to do this palliative care services. We have to do this palliative care services. We have to do this palliative care hospital हमने बनाया और इस दौरान ही हमें ये एहसास हुआ कि रेडिएशन की फैसिलिटीज इतनी कम है कि दी पेशेंट्स हैव टू वेट फॉर द रेडिएशन एंड व्हाइल वेटिंग फॉर द रेडिएशन द डिजीज स्प्रेड्स एंड यू लूज द पेशेंट तो हमने फिर रेडिएशन का भी ब्लॉक शुरू कर दिया तो अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट ये हमने बातें कर ली हैं हमारी मेमोग्राफी मशीन जो है ये सारे पाकिस्तान में जाती हैं एक टीम ऑफ डॉक्टर्स तो उसमें कोई हार्ड फिल्म निकालने की जरूरत नहीं होती है a team of doctors are sitting in the hospital, radiologists, who are visuals, who are doing detection, and who are doing a report issue. So, who are doing it, who are ultrasound screening, and who are doing a biopsy. Hoti. Biopsy is confirmed, confirm ho jai, we bring these patients, and we do free of cost surgery. So, breast cancer surgeon is there, he came from the UK. So, now you can see what Brigadier Sahib has told us, that our camps are where they are. ऐसे रिमोट एरियाज में भी हमारे कैंप्स गए हैं जहां लोग हमें कहते थे कि वहां कोई नहीं आएगा वहां पे 30 के बजाय 30 के बजाय 60 60 60 90 90 औरतें आती रही हैं और हमने माशाल्लाह हमने एक-एक महीना लगाया इवन इन चित्रौल वी हैड अ वेरी ओवरवेलमिंग रिस्पांस एंड इवन इन बलूचिस्तान ब्रिगेड साहब इफ यू रिकॉल देयर वाज एन ओवरवेलमिंग रिस्पांस एंड वी वर हैड अ कंसर्न दैट यू नो एक दिन में 90 हम कर नहीं सकते हमारी वो मशीन ओवरहीट हो जाएगी so we have stayed there for a longer period of time. So Alhamdulillah, this is what we've done. And then now this surgeon, Dr. Hamad Raza Sheikh, a great man, I would say he's a uh, graduate of King Edward, I think 2000. And he was there in UK in 2015. 
2014 or 15, and we went there for this uh, event for fundraising. And when he saw these uh, pictures and he was so motivated, he said, I have had enough here, I have earned a lot and now it's time to go back. So he joined us and he's doing this free breast cancer surgery. Alhamdulillah, so far he's done uh, 1300 free, of course, breast cancer surgeries. Alhamdulillah. So uh, we are a charitable organization and uh, our mission statement, as we said, is no patient will be refused, even in the later stages, even in the palliative care stages, stages three and four, and we will provide free treatment to all. So what we did was we purchased this 27 acres of land, like Brigadier have told you, and our, uh, the architect said that he, since you are a charity uh, project, so 600 bed in one go. So what you have to do is start with the first block and then the second. So Alhamdulillah, we built the second block. And I'm very glad to inform you that in next month, inshallah, we'll be laying the foundations of 200 bedded block of oncology. Alhamdulillah. So somebody has been very generous because it will cost a billion rupees. There are about four, yes, sir, four floors or five floors? Five floors. Five floors. So one basement and four floors. So Alhamdulillah, uh, somebody has come forward and we request all of you also to join hands. They have said we are going to go stage-wise, we are going to make the basement which will cost about 25 crores and then the, the ground floor which will house all the diagnostic block and we will have all the state-of-the-art uh, machine, we will have a PET scan in fact. Uh, our uh, director Edmund, yet only this morning she informed me that there has been a donor who wants to donate a PET scan. So uh, I was suggesting that it's too early to get a PET scan, we need a CT, you know, and then we had an MRI and then so many of them. So that will house the diagnostic and the OPD. So Alhamdulillah, the hospital, were, the foundations were laid on 2015 June. I still remember it was a very hot day, June uh, 2015, and all the guests who were here, who were there at the foundation laying ceremony, in fact, we ourselves were also thinking it was all bad and all around. There was nothing, and it was like you know what we call a chapar. So there was standing water there. So we had a little place to keep it. It was uh, uh, nobody wanted to buy that land, and it was God sent that we went there and we bought this huge chunk of 27 acres. So Alhamdulillah, in 2015 and then 2018, we finished the finishing stages and Alhamdulillah, 2019, we started. So only in a period of about four years, we started giving services. We didn't wait, wait for the last brick to be laid. We started the treatment. So uh, emergency radiation, I told you patients have to wait for a long time, four months to six months, just to get radiation. So unfortunately, the disease, since it doesn't stay in one place, it spreads to the different parts of the body. So you need to give them radiation on time. So we had radiation block. We had no funds. We had to do everything. Allah Taala did this. We had to give it to them. We had to give it to them. I'm sharing some of those, uh, you know, things which from my heart, which we feel you should also know. So we said that steel mill malkan mutawajjo. Cement mint malkan mutawajjo, or we bunkers banana or free treatment. Ke liye. We started getting callers. Me, who Arisha Zaman, our director of radiation, and her telephone number. Tha. She got calls, you know, like, okay, so we have seen your hospital. Dekhe. Everybody has their apprehensions, obviously. So, when will they come to see? So, they said, you have to die when they die. That was the month of December. And uh, he said, okay, I'll be there at 4 o'clock. So, they were a little surprised. They said, 4 o'clock is good. So, she went there at 4 in the morning and she went with the guard and the driver and the sahab came and they saw and they said that Madam, I had to give you 10 tons but now I will give you 100 tons. So, they said that they had to give you 100 tons. So, Alhamdulillah, there are many stories which I can uh, you know, but go on narrating also. So the waiting period you can see was six months and four to six months in Shokhatana <coughs> and known or eight dead, dead sal, the Greek art mean is a dead sal. And during this period the patient used to die. So on emergency basis we started the construction. Here our radiation block here. Well, let me uh, tell you uh, that one, a bunker is a, a room in which the machine is housed. Basically this is an electromagnetic radiation. This is the atomic radiation that is the atom bomb. 
तो इसको बड़े कंट्रोल तरीके से और इसके ऊपर कोई पांच छह इदारे एजेंसी मॉनिटर नॉट ओनली द कंस्ट्रक्शन बट ऑल्सो द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट तो हम वी इन वन गो मेड अबाउट सेवन बंकर एक बंकर जो है वो तकरीबन पांच साढ़े पांच छह करोड़ का बनता है वन बंकर द वॉल्स आर सेवन फीट ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट थिक एंड द रूफ इज लाइक एट फीट ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट थिक एंड द ग्राउंड द फ्लोर इज लाइक थर्टीन फीट ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट थिक तो आप खुद सोचें कि और इसकी जो रिक्वायरमेंट है इसमें जो बजरी पड़ेगी वो मरदगा की होगी और इसमें जो टेम्परेचर होगा वेन यू आर पोरिंग दैट कॉन्क्रीट शुड बी 28 डिग्रीज और बाहर का टेम्परेचर 44 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड होता था उसमें जब ये हम डाल देते तो व्हाट वी डिड वॉज के पूरे लाहौर के बर्फ खाने के बर्फ के वो जो बड़े ब्लॉक्स होते हैं जो यू नो दस ह्यूज ब्लॉक्स ऑफ बर्फ दे यूज टू बी पोर्ट ऑन द बाउजर एंड द सीमेंट यूज टू बी मेक्स एंड यूज टू बी पोर्ट सो दिस इज हाउ दिस थिंग केम अप एंड यू नो अलहमदुल्लह वी वर एबल टू मेक द सेवन बंकर्स ऑन द टाइम और उसमें फ्लॉलेस क्योंकि दीस सेवन एजेंसीज व्हिच वर वाचिंग यू नो ऑल द रेडिएशन एक्सपर्ट्स द एटॉमिक एनर्जी कमीशन द इंटरनेशनल एटॉमिक एनर्जी कमीशन टू चेक व्हेदर इट वुड बी अ हेल्थ हैजर्ड बिकॉज़ इट इफ इट लीक्स रेडिएशन इट विल कॉज हैजर्ड टू द सराउंडिंग एंड द पब्लिक आल्सो देन वी स्टार्टेड गेटिंग मशीन्स द फर्स्ट मशीन वाज टोटली एक बार में उन दिनों ने पहला बंकर हमारा बनवाया उन्होंने जनाब हमें ये कहा कि जी शी वॉज ब्रेस्ट कैंसर सर्वाइवर एक्चुअली शी सोल्ड ऑफ शी वॉज क्वाइट यंग एंड एट स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन शी सोल्ड ऑफ हर हाउस इन डिफेंस घर भेज दिया उन्होंने हमने उनको बड़ा रोका ब्रिगेडियर साहब ने भी कहा कि ऐसे ना करो बेटे आप आपके बच्चे भी छोड़ने कहते नहीं मैंने अल्लाह से वादा किया अल्लाह ने मुझे शिफा दी है मैं ये दूँ तो इस तरह ये स्टोरियाँ दो भाई आए तो वही से उन्होंने कहा कि ये मशीन कितने की एक कोबॉल सिक्सटी है या टू कोबॉल सिक्सटी टू लीनियर एक्सलेटर्स एंड एंड वन ब्रेक थेरेपी तो ये हमने कहा जी कि ये बारह करोड़ की मशीन है उन्होंने कहा कि जी हम दो भाई मिलके दे देंगे सींग इज बिलीविंग वो आके आप देखें तो आप हैरान रह जाओगे कि जिस तरह से ये और हमारा तो पुख्ता यकीन है कि बनाने वाला उसकी ज़ात है क्योंकि हमारे में इतनी वो नहीं है कि ना कोई हमें जानता लोग हमारा मजाक उड़ाते थे सच्ची मैं आपको बात बताऊँ दो में पीसी में हमने इसकी इनाग्रेशन की हमने ये लॉन्च किया ना विजनरी प्रोफेसर शेर यार ही ब्रॉड द कम्युनिटी द डॉक्टर्स कम्युनिटी ऑन द ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट एवरीबॉडी वाज इन माइंड एंड दे सेड एट द एंड ऑफ द मीटिंग इन्हा दी शक्ला देखी जानता है इन्हनो कोई है नहीं गल्ला करते ने अरबा दी तो ये वाकई हकीकत थी वी वर वेरी डीमोरलाइज्ड और हमने कहा अल्लाह ताला तू ही हमारी इज्जत रखने वाला अल्लाह ताला ने बता दिया कि देखो मैं हूं ना और हम तो हमारा तो ये पुख्ता यकीन है कि हमें तो इस रास्ते पे उसने उसी ने डाला हम तो कस्टोडियन है बना तो आप रहे हैं आवाम पाकिस्तान की आवाम बना रही है इसमें गवर्नमेंट का एक रुपया नहीं है इट इज़ ऑन रिकॉर्ड ना जमीन में ना बिल्डिंग में ना किसी मशीन में ये आवाम का है अच्छा जी ये हमारी फिर आगे है जो लेटेस्ट मशीनें आ गई हैं देखें वेरियंट टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज फ्राम दूनाइट मशीन ये लेटेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट ड्यूल एनर्जी मशीन है जी हमारी और ये 18 एन ई मिलियन इलेक्ट्रॉन बोर्ड्स इस पर वो सारी वो जो ब्रिगेड साहब बता रहे थे आई एम आर टी आई जी आर टी और सारी वो लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी इसमें इंक्लूड वी हैव स्पेंड अबाउट वन पॉइंट एट वन पॉइंट बिलियन ऑन द जस्ट द रेडिएशन ब्लॉक एंड इट स्टार्टेड फंक्शनिंग इन टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन एंड अलहमद आई एम वेरी प्राउड टू अनाउंस दैट अबाउट टू हंड्रेड पेशेंट्स आर कमिंग डेली फॉर रेडिएशन तो जो अनमेट नीड थी ना जी Did we uh, finish off the waiting time? Is finished. Please, sir. What is the patient waiting time now? Two weeks. Two weeks only. So anybody who needs radiation goes to other hospitals. They say, "Acha, six months later they come to us." And this way, I am telling you this way because my faith is so strong. One time, a man came and he got a date for six months. So he was given promptly two weeks uh, radiation time, and when he was radiated on that linear accelerated dual energy, so he was radiated on that linear accelerated dual energy. So he was radiated on that उतर के उन्होंने मशीन को हाथ लगाया चूमा फिर उसके बाद वापस गए डायरेक्टर्स ऑफिस हरीशा जमान और कहा डॉक्टर साहब मेरे साथ धोखा तो नहीं हुआ ये ना हो कि मुझे मशीन में लटा के निकाल दिया क्यों क्यों कह रहे हो आप कहते जी हमसे तो आपने एक रुपया नहीं लिया तो हम तो गए थे वहां पे फलाने हॉस्पिटल में उनसे उन्होंने हमसे सात लाख रुपया मांगा था तो हमने कहा जी बस ये जिसने दिया मशीन उसके लिए आप दुआएं करें तो वो ही वॉन्टेड टू यू नो आज के जी मेरे साथ कोई धोखा तो नहीं हो रहा है कि मुझे लिटा कर उतार दिया आप लोगों ने और मुझे रेडिएशन ना लगे अलहमद ला सर तो अब जी सर स्टार्टिंग डेट इज सबसे सत्ताईसवीं शाम शब खतर को शुरू हुआ अलहमद जी अलहमद ट्वेंटी सेवन रमजान को शुरू किया था सत्ताईस रमजान को शुरू किया और ये हमारे उस वक्त हम सोचते थे ये पॉसिबल नहीं है 
लेकिन हमने ये हमारी जो डायरेक्टर भी थी हमारे चेयरमैन और हम सारों ने कहा कि देखो रमज़ान का महीना और सत्ताईसवें रमज़ान को हर सूरत हमने पहले मरीज को लगाना है तो उसकी बरकत थी जी और ब्रिगेडियर साहब मेड इट पॉसिबल बिकॉज इनकी अनटाइलिंग एफर्ट थी रात रात वहाँ पे खड़े हो गए अच्छा जी जब मैं यूके हैं चैरिटी कमीशन में अभी पाउंड डोनेटेड इन यू के मैचिंग ग्रांट but we cannot bring that money to pakistan even the money that you will raise here will go to wells fargo bank is all audit and we don't bring it to pakistan we open lcs jo hum machine khareed rahe hain machine to aap se hi khareedni hai to hamari sari machine yahan se gayi hai so yahan pe hum 501 c3 hai aur denmark mein bhi registered hai aur canada mein hamara under process hai ek main aapko aakhri slide dikhaun ye slide pakistan ki nahi hai ye the overseas yahan main kaam kar raha tha so what happened was that uh, we were seeing patients in the palliative out patients so the nurse said that this the man is in great pain and you know he's got to le aaye to humne usko chip dekha dawaiyan shwaiyan likhi humne kaha you need we need to keep him you know admit him to humne kaha tumhare sath koi hai iska tha ha meri family kahan bahar ho bahar gayi phir phir aake aage kehte koi hai hi nahi to then he said nahi nahi bahar wo ek dog hai bahar and he is my family i have nobody in this world except my family my dog We were so surprised. In fact, I'll get admitted on the only in one condition. If you allow my dog to be admitted, you know, stay with me in the hospital. We said, Oh my God, we can't allow a dog inside the ward. So what we went to the director and we sought out, uh, you know, hal, uh, the solution for that. And we the ye ek uh, ward ka tha, and you can see the doors are open, and it's an air condition, but dogs jo hai na aur uska bed thanks ki yahan kar diya. So he was constantly with him. You know, he used to talk with him. दोज वो ओन डॉग नो के कितने लविंग होते हैं कितने कैरिंग भी होते हैं तो वो बाहर से उसकी बात भी सुनता था भाग के भी जाता था सब ही डाइड आफ्टर अबाउट थ्री टू टेन डेज एंड गुड यू बिलीव द डॉग डिड नॉट मूव फ्रॉम देर हमारे लिए प्रॉब्लम हुई फिर हमने उसको अडॉप्शन के लिए वो वहाँ से जाता नहीं था फिर हॉस्पिटल के डायरेक्टर ने उसमें स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट लिया और फिर उसको जो है ना किसी के अडॉप्शन में दे दिया सो दैट्स वाई आई से इवन एनिमल्स है Yeah. Okay, so uh, cancer, you know, in the early stages, most of the cancers are curable. Right. But if it's not detected early, like I showed you the slide in the in the breast cancer, so it usually it starts in the area and जहाँ से वो शुरू है. If it is not treated or diagnosed, it spreads by many uh, channels. You know, lymphatics, uh, blood vessels, and uh, direct spread. Once it spread and it goes into different organs of the body. जहाँ पे उसको फर्टाइल ग्राउंड मिले वो ग्रो कर जाएगा यूजली इट्स द वाइटल ऑर्गन आपके लिवर है लंग्स है ब्रेन है किडनीज हैं बोन्स हैं हर जगह ये चली जाती है बीमारी देन इट बिकम्स इनक्योरेबल रिमिशन तो हो जाती है ट्रीटमेंट इंटेंस करनी पड़ती है लेकिन दे आर इनवेरेबली इनक्योरेबल डिजीज सो ये इनक्योरेबल डिजीज ये एडवांस कैंसर स्टेज थ्री एंड फोर इनको पैलेटिव केयर करते हैं और ये पैलेटिव केयर मेरी पूरी टॉक है मेरा तो फील्ड है और इसमें जो है ना इट्स अ मॉडल ऑफ केयर इट इज़ नॉट ओनली के पीपल थिंक कि जी दवाई दे देते हैं मॉर्फिन दे दिया सुला दिया ये ऐसे नहीं इट्स अ मॉडल ऑफ केयर देर आर सो मेनी डिपार्टमेंट्स इन्वॉल्व एंड इट इज़ नॉट दैट वी डू नॉट डू रेडिएशन और डू नॉट डू कीमोथेरेपीज इन पैलेटिव केयर इफ इट्स इफ ए फीमेल विद ब्रेस्ट कैंसर डॉक्टर फोजिए विल सपोर्ट मी यू नो आई हैव मैनी पेशेंट्स नाउ नेवर ट्रीटेड now they have second days in the bones lytic lesions don't do anything she going to i get a fracture badhiya toot jayenge to we give them tailor made kisam ki treatment dete hain ko bahut intensely na ho aur unki quality of life basically quality of life the to usse bahut fayda hota hai regression hoti hai unki pain khatam ho jati hai to basically palliative care is pain and symptom management so symptom management mein there are many modalities to inke liye pakistan mein koi aisa center nahi tha nobody wants to take them because it becomes a liability and also that the hospitals on the mortality bad jati ki tar jo aata hai wo mar jata hai to wo dawai likh ke usko bhej dete hain kehte ghar chale jao aur phir ye isi tarah wo dur daraz ilakon mein adiyan ragad ragad de de you know terrible to we take in these patients we admit them so the doctors will do the work of the pain and symptom management and there are the nurses and there are physiotherapists the whole team and we train the primary carer jisne ghar mein hamara ye nahi hai ki hum usko daakhil karke wahan se uski mayyat uth ke jaye nahi hum usko aisa is tabal kar denge because everybody wants to sleep on his own bed 
and everybody wants to be in, in their own home and then within their loved ones तो हम उसको इस काबिल कर देंगे कि वो रिहेबिलिटेट अपने घर में हो और कैसे वो जाएगा उसकी फैमिली को ट्रेन करते हैं जो भी प्राइमरी केयरर होता है उसको हम उसको ट्रेन करते हैं कि क्लास्टमी के बैग ऐसे बदल लें फिजियोथेरेपी ऐसे करनी है दवाई ये देनी ये भी हो गया उसके बाद फिर हमारे पास वॉल्टियर सपोर्ट प्रोग्राम है होम केयर प्रोग्राम है वट वी डू इज वी हैव अ वॉल्टियर इन एवरी एरिया सो वंस द पेशेंट इज देयर वी इंट्रोड्यूस दैम इन द वॉर्ड और जब वो चले जाते हैं तो दे that volunteer keeps an eye on that patient one hour one week that's all we ask from the volunteers one hour one week so they make a visit to the patient's home and see it as a checklist because these volunteers are trained by us six weeks training ye bhi lete hain they are not doctors they are not supposed to prescribe so wo checklist mein wo tick karte hain and then they call the nurse coordinator in the hospital and tell them that uh, whether the patient is doing fine is pain free the medication is good the family is taking care or otherwise कि दर्द है एंड प्राइम जो है ना बर्न आउट है और फैमिली कुछ नहीं कर देन समटाइम्स दे से डॉक्टर वी नीड टू ग्रिप ब्रिंग बैक द पेशेंट टू द हॉस्पिटल सो इन एंड आउट ऑफ द हॉस्पिटल कैन बी मेनी टाइम्स द आवर एम्बुलेंसेस गोस एंड ब्रिंग्स द पेशेंट टू द हॉस्पिटल सो दिस इज अ बेसिकली अ मॉडल ऑफ केयर जो पैलिएटिव केयर का हम वो कर रहे हैं एंड देन वी हैव दीस स्काइप रूम्स एंड इवन वी आर डूइंग टेली मेडिसिन जो पेशेंट देख लिया दे आर इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद अस मेडिकेशन के लिए तस्वीरें उतार के भेजते हैं टाइप नहीं कर सकते हैं वॉइस मैसेज भेज देते हैं ठीक है जी सो वी आर इन डायरेक्ट कॉन्टैक्ट विद द पेशेंट प्रोवाइड आप यकीन करें मेनी डॉक्टर्स सेटिंग ईयर लोगों का ख्याल है कि सिर्फ क्योर करके ही दुआएँ मिलती हैं और लोग हमारे मेरे पैलिएटिव पेशेंट्स के फौत होने के बाद उनकी फैमिली ज़रूर आती है आप पकड़ के शुक्रिया अदा करती है बहुत जो दे सकते हैं डोनेशन भी दे के जाते हैं और हम हैरान होते हैं डॉक्टर शहरी आप कहते हैं कि यार तेरा मरीज मर भी जाता है वो फिर भी शुक्रिया करके जाते हैं तो वहाँ जो मरीज चला जाता है <laughs> तो अलहमदिल्ला जी तो आई रिक्वेस्ट दोस्त डॉक्टर्स जो पैलेटिव से ताल्लुक करते हैं डॉक्टर फौजिया हैं देर आर सो मैनी अदर पीपल तो देर आर मैनी डॉक्टर्स जो वेलिंग टू ट्रेन आर स्टाफ यू नो डॉक्टर्स ऑल्सो एंड कैन बी यू नो ऑन जूम और डिस्टेंट लर्निंग भी होती है आए तो आप जरूर अगर टाइम स्पेंड कर सकते हैं जरूर करें एनी अदर क्वेश्चन जी मैंने पहले मैंने बहुत टाइम ले लिया सॉरी सो वेरी गुड एंड एन इंटेलिजेंट क्वेश्चन वेन समी इज गेटिंग ट्रीटमेंट एंड वी से दैट इफ आई यू टाइटल टू सिकॉज सिकॉज इज यू नो लाइक सो इट सेज येस को साइन कर देता बट इफ इज सेज नो I I I can pay. So he asked us the same question. Okay, how much will be? So we don't never quote them in millions or lakhs or something. It's a very small amount. What we uh, have decided so far is we take the you know the running expense, the electricity and all those expendables. I am covering the market. So like for radiation, I am going to tell you. Like we say for one week of radiation, with the other hospitals are charging one lakh fifty thousand. Right, sir? Yeah, exactly. One lakh fifty thousand for one week. Yeah, one week means five fractions of radiation. So we say fifteen thousand rupees. So on an average, if it is four weeks radiation, so that would be, young man, sixty thousand. So sixty thousand is a very small amount in Pakistan. With this, uh, you know. So and then also those people who say, "Hey, okay, I can pay," they will sometimes say, "We leave it to them." We say, "Okay, it's like sixty thousand." So they say, "I'll give half." Okay, you make a donation, put in the the in the bank account, and give her the receipt. Somebody, some people they pay full also. If somebody wants to sponsor other patients, they do also. Yes. So this is how the hospital is running. Actually, the running cost is also there. So many people ask us, how are you going to run this huge hospital? It's 120 beds now. The 200 beds are coming up, and then it's going to be about 600 beds. so we have a business model we have a endowment fund so every donation that we get 20% goes in the endowment fund very secure investment in the government or uske alawa there are so many other thing and apart from that at the end of the day we still are dependent on charity 50% would be charity even shaukat khanum today is 50% on charity and 50% from their own income do you plan on expanding it this is not yet complete it's, i would say it's only 30% so there are going to be like four more blocks So the third block, we have completed two blocks. So the third block, the foundations will be in Shahda next month, and it will be a 200 bedded hospital. It will be like five floors. Any other question? I think uh, we can start. Okay. So.
Thank you so much. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Riaz, Riaz uncle. Um, I am my amazing mother, Samira Intiazi, and you already heard from her how close to our heart and our home this cause is. Um, so before I go on with anything, because I know you are, all are feeling very generous, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you all for just showing up. Before you even donate a single dollar or a cent, you know that you are supporting the cause just by learning, understanding what the need is, understanding what the need that this hospital is going to be fulfilling is, and absorbing that awareness and sh so I want to make sure that you all know, even if you don't donate anything tonight, just by showing up and learning what we're doing and what these amazing people have been doing with this uh, hospital um, is really important. And also I want to honor and thank some of the key people that have been involved in this. Dr. Sherry Dr. Riaz Rehman, who we just heard from, Brigadier Zahirullah Saab, um, Mrs. Ghazala Tariq, all of you who've been, you know, part of this journey from the very beginning, going to all these locations, there like we heard from Dr. Riaz from the very first day that the brick was laid. Um, so thank you very much for all of your time, your effort that you've been putting into this. And, yeah. So, um, we all know a little bit more about this hospital as we've been going through the evening. This is going to be the biggest cancer research hospital in the nation. This is going to be the first hospital that's going to be offering all services 100% free of charge to the people who need it. And because, like I said, I know you are all feeling generous, we are going to kick off the round of fundraising with the opportunity to donate $25,000. $25,000 is just a little bit of the amount of money that we need to continue to go on this journey. Um, a lot of the information we just heard in that presentation, right? We are trying to build a hospital of six blocks to serve more than the 20% of the people that need it that are getting it right now. We've only completed two out of those six blocks. So we have a long journey ahead of us that you all can be a part of. So who, if anyone, is going to donate at the $25,000 level? Another thing I just want to mention is $25,000 gets you a dedicated ward at the hospital. Um, you will have it personally dedicated, you will be sponsoring a ward that will be saving lives. Very important thing I forgot to mention before I started the fundraising is the process. So let me start, do that one first. So around the room we have uh, a group of people who are helping us out and I would like for all of you to stand up and raise your hands who will be collecting your donations as you make them. So everyone in the back over there, any time while I'm talking, if you would like to make a donation, simply raise your hand and one of these people will come and collect the donation and make it a very smooth process for you. At your tables, you have uh, an envelope like this, which you'll use for your donation. So you can donate with cash, check, credit card, whatever the easiest thing for you is. Um, and you can call any of our ushers around the room over to help you with the donation process if you need it. Okay, we're still at $25,000 if there are any takers. Okay, $20,000 is another level that you can donate at that also gets you the sponsorship of uh, up to a ward at the hospital. For this, you know, very long journey, incredible journey that we have, 
to get us to the six wards and start being able to treat 100% of the people that need it in Pakistan, that are not currently getting the treatment that they need. That your $28,000 or any dollars that you donate will be able to get us. Um, and I know we've heard a lot of this from Dr. Riaz and Brigadier Zahirullah as well, but just so you understand kind of the cost that goes into providing these services and the cost that goes into creating even the infrastructure and getting the machines to be able to start. Um, the installation of just two Cobalt 60 machines costs 1.4 million US dollars. This is the scale of cost and, and, and money that we're talking about in order to get these treatments going, to get people the care that they need, to, to not have situations in Pakistan where people are choosing between education and medicine, or choosing between care for themselves or care for their children, you know? Um, just the installation of the CT simulator at the hospital is half a million dollars. You know, just over half a million dollars. So the journey is long and difficult, but you all are going to be a part of it. Um, so $17,500. Anyone for $17,500 um, to continue this amazing cause to give people the care that they need in Pakistan. Remember that this hospital is meeting a currently unmet need in Pakistan. They will provide service for free for anyone who needs it and deserves it, regardless of what stage of cancer they're at. Currently, there are services, we heard about some of them from Dr. Riaz. The most difficult part of cancer care is providing that late stage care where treatment might be difficult, definitely expensive, and this hospital is going to do that for anyone who walks through the door that needs it um, and, that, and that, has, that asks for it. Very directly saving lives. We are, I mean, you all saw Dr. Riaz's presentation. Right now we're only addressing 20% of the people that need cancer care treatment in the country. 20%. That means just in this room, if there are 100 of us here, 80 people in this room would go untreated at any stage of cancer that they, that they require treatment for. So it's definitely something that we need to improve. We've got to put our ushers to work. I had a whole conversation with them ahead of time about how to make this a smooth process and how to serve you guys. So let's not let this evening go by without putting them to work. I also want to take this, this time to see if anyone has any other thoughts or questions for any one of the presenters today. I know they all did a really good job of explaining. Oh, I think we have one. We have $10,000. Woo! We have a $10,000 donation. Thank you so much. Anonymous donation, uh, but good. Let's 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 keep that energy going. Thank you so much. Ten thousand dollars, halfway to a whole ward at the cancer, a dedicated sponsorship of a ward at the cancer research hospital. Another ten thousand. And another ten thousand dollars. Amazing. We're already at twenty thousand dollars for the evening. That's wonderful. Um, who, if anyone would like to donate at the $5,000 level, $5,000, a few of the amazing things that $5,000 will be able to provide at the hospital, um, just around $5,000 roughly will be up to 10 to 12 cycles of chemotherapy for a patient at the hospital, which we know, you know, can be extensive a lot of people unfortunately have are not able to continue all the cycles of chemotherapy that they need to because of the cost so 
you know, five thousand dollars would really go a long way to providing this care for so many of the people that need it in Pakistan. Did I see a hand in the back? Okay. Vigorous head shaking. <laughs> Amazing, okay. I know we're all also eagerly awaiting dinner, so $2,500. Any people who want to donate at the $2,500 level? $2,500 will do a lot more than um, cycles of chemotherapy. There is breast cancer surgery, radiation treatment, the palliative care uh, portion of uh, the hospital services. I see some action in the back corner there. I think it's brewing into donation. Anyone else around the room? We're already at $20,000, which is an amazing uh, amount of progress for just a few minutes. But I know, I know a lot more of you came here to donate, you know? And I know not everyone is here to donate at the $25,000, the $20,000 level, but $2,500, $2,000, um, $2,000 also goes, I mean, we are down to a level that starts providing so many of the basic needs of patients at the hospital. Um, besides machinery and equipment, I mean, as Dr. Riaz said throughout his presentation, there's staff to be paid, there are the lights that need to be kept on, bills that need to be paid weekly, monthly, to keep the operation going. There's a, a large amount of money that goes into a hospital this size. It's, like I said, when complete, it's going to be the biggest hospital cancer research hospital that provides palliative care in the nation. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to let you all go to dinner. Thank you so much for helping raise $20,000 tonight. Our ushers are going to stay around the room. You can raise your hand, find me, uh, my husband Ryan, who's in the orange kurta in the back, or any of the other ushers that have been wandering around the table if you want to donate throughout the night. Um, one thing I want to make sure I leave you all with, uh, like I said at the beginning, even if you don't donate anything tonight, just being here and learning the fact that this hospital is in business, the kind of care it's providing, and what it takes to get something like this going, and what it takes to keep a hospital like this in operation is so important. Um, so if you're not able to donate tonight, I know you will be able to at some other time. And a very important thing, especially for those of you who work at any corporation here in the US, find out what your corporate matching programs are. Right, your $2,500 donation can turn into a $10,000 donation if your company offers that kind of matching. Companies will offer one for one, three to one, two to one, so whatever you donate tonight, this is a 5013C accredited uh, charity, which means that's, that's basically what any corporation needs in order to match donations. So whatever you donate, please make sure you check and Multiply that donation if you can, because we all know a lot of the corporations in the nation are looking for avenues, looking for causes to support, and this can be one of the primary ones that they do. Okay, thank you all very much. $20,000 raised, and this is just the first fundraiser of this kind that we've had for this uh, hospital. We hope that we can make this a more regular thing. We hope to see a lot of you again and again. Um, those of you who ever have the, the, the lucky opportunity to ever be in Lahore, try to seek the hospital out and understand where it's at, what it's, what, what's happening, and how you can continue to support. Thank you all very much, and have a wonderful dinner.